you in better understanding your purpose in God. God bless you all. Um, in second year, we had several classes. Um, we learned how to evangelize theology. We learned about the tabernacle. We learned how to preach. We learned about church history. And we learned how to teach. Each, play, each class played a role in helping each student in second year understand their purpose in God. The center of each class was Jesus Christ. And as we learned more about God and his character and who we are in Christ, <clears throat> it helped us to understand the women and men that we are today, the women and men that we no longer are, and the women and men that we desire to be one day in Christ. We may not be where we want to be, we're still a work in progress, but at least we know now, we believe that through Christ we will become the man and woman that God created us to be. First year, second year congratulates you, and we encourage you to continue your studies. Graduates, we congratulate you as well, and we look forward to sitting where you are today. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up, amen, hallelujah, for our sister Tahina Iglesias from second year, hallelujah. Now at this time, come on, let's give a round of applause, amen, hallelujah, for our sister Veronica Sosa, amen, hallelujah, from LOE, Pastor Martinez Church, amen, hallelujah. She is representing third year, and her question is, how has three years of intense Bible study helped develop you into a better disciple? Praise the Lord Jesus. Before I begin, I want to thank my pastor, Ernest Martinez, because it was not my decision or my choice, um, or even my idea, to come to Bible study. Um, representing the third year, I give thanks to each and every one of the students in third year because I've learned from everyone. And um, I thank my pastor because not only did he tell me he wanted, well not only me but us, the first group, not only did he tell us he wanted us to come to Bible Institute, but he drove us here, he brought us to the... and then he drove us each home. Praise God, that was three years ago. And I thank God for that day three years ago. I didn't expect to like it. I didn't expect to fit in. I didn't even expect to um, understand, as the sister was saying the first year, we weren't even sure that we were going to even understand other people who are in the, in the Lord longer were, were we going to be able to catch up and keep up? But I thank God for the teachers that he has brought us because everybody learns at their own level and they're all so patient with us and we thank God for them. Amen. And getting into my question about discipleship. The definition of discipleship is the act, and I emphasize the word act, the act of learning from and following a teacher. And the word act is a word of action. And it means that you have to do something. So as I thought of this question of discipleship, and I thought of doing something, it comes to me the phrase, what would Jesus do? So I think what did, instead of what would, but what did Jesus do? And we all know that Jesus taught. We all know that Jesus saved. We all know that Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. So if I'm learning and if I'm following, my teacher, if I'm following Jesus, then I need to do what Jesus did. Right. And I am not a savior, but I can lead people to Christ. Right. I can present the plan of salvation to people out there who haven't heard of Jesus. And it reminds me of something I learned in first year, sitting in the fourth row, my beautiful teacher, she told us, 
over and over again, regardless of what you're saying, regardless of what you're doing, bring, bring it back Jesus. to Jesus. Yes. And she would always remind us, bring it back to Jesus. So, as I said, Jesus saved, we bring our conversations back to Jesus and we lead him. I've learned, I've even tried to memorize the plan of salvation and teach people to recite the Lord's, um, um, but it's because I've been, I'm trying to prepare myself. Jesus taught, whether we're teachers or we're not teachers, we can all open the Bible and read a verse to someone. We can all open the Bible and read to someone a parable. Someone approached me last year and asked me about the end of the world. I hadn't gotten into third year. I hadn't studied Revelation yet. But what I did was I opened my Bible to Matthew and I said, Well, I can go. tell you about when Jesus comes. And I remember when the Patron told about the parables, I said, Well, I can tell you about the ten virgins. You need to be ready. Praise God. Our Lord healed. And as I know, I'm not a healer, but I can take my brother and my sister's hands and I can tell them I can pray with you. I can join you in prayer. I can unite with you in prayer. I can present you to the Lord at night in prayer. A friend of mine, when I was sick, gave me a whole list of all the verses dealing with healing. And I kept that. And whenever someone is sick, I can have a verse for them. This is a part of what we've learned, to be prepared, to be ready at all times. And I find myself falling into what I didn't know was going on. We don't realize and don't even know what's going on. But we are becoming disciples. And it's taking its toll, it's taking its time, but we are all presented with opportunities where we can speak to someone about Jesus. And I've learned to stop telling people to go to church and I've learned to start telling people, let me tell you who Jesus is and then I'll invite you to church. Praise the Lord. I've stopped being general when I talk to people. I used to always say, God is good and trust God. But now I'm learning to narrow things down and be a little more specific to Jesus and explain to people who Jesus is and what Jesus did and why they need to know Jesus. And the world is very general and sometimes we get caught up in speaking to people in generalizations and just telling people that God is great. And even though God is great, they need to know Jesus in order to get to God. Praise and hallelujah. And I'm going to read a biblical verse that popped out as our Pastor Delgado would tell us in class, my Bible is a pop-up book. And this popped out to me in highlight, bold, italics, underline, and it's John 15, 16. And I'm going to read just one sentence of the whole verse. And it says, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. And of the whole verse, a lot of people concentrate on the beginning of that verse, a lot of people concentrate on the end. But what spoke to me was that we need to be people of action, and we need go. to go, and we need to put into practice and use what we've learned throughout these three Amen. years. Thank you all, and God bless. Thank you.